Hi there and welcome. This is Jenna from McGuire. So lately I've been getting many requests to do some more foiling techniques. Now foiling is something that will give you great shine and unique results on your cards. And today I'm combining it with die cutting. I've done some similar techniques in the past, but today is definitely my favorite after trying out a bunch of different things. I have a few different techniques to share with you. The first one that I did on most of my examples is definitely my favorite. I will link here to a video I've done in the past for similar looks where you do not need a laminator. For most of today's techniques you do, but I tell you the results are definitely worth it and I'll talk about what to do if you don't have one. As you can see, I have a bunch of examples to share with you today because I had so much fun with this technique. Okay, let's start with my favorite technique, and that is where I create a stencil from my dies. So here I have a bunch of cardstock pieces where I went ahead and die cut them with some dies, and I'll talk about those dies later. You can use any cardstock for this. I should have used scraps, and I didn't think about it at the time. Because again, we're just using these as stencils and not actually on our project, so it doesn't matter what color they are. Now, sometimes when you run uh, cardstock with a die through your die cut machine, the paper warps a little bit. That sometimes happens, especially with intricate dies. If you see warping, I recommend just running it through a laminator, just the heat setting and laminator, and it will smooth it out and you'll have perfectly flat cardstock. So that's a trick. Anytime you have warping of paper, just use your laminator. And by the way, this is one of my favorite uses of a laminator in my craft room. Okay, now I wanted to create one more stencil before we start the technique. And this time I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Rounded Alphabet Die Set. I really like the style of these uh, letters and they're a little less than an inch tall, so it's perfect for a card. I wanted to show you the trick that I did to get the spacing just right for the sentiment that says, hello you. I have here on my table a piece of tape facing up and I have two other pieces of tape holding it at the ends. I'm positioning my letters onto the sticky tape, and you can see the cutting edges down. I need two L's for the word hello, but I only have one hello die. So here's a trick that I do. A lot of people ask about this. I find another letter that's the same width, and I use it as a place setting. So here I use the F in the place setting for the L, for the second L. So say you need another O, you could use a Q. Just look for a die that's a similar size. Now I'm taking another piece of tape and transferring all of those letter dies to that tape. So that is ready to die cut as soon as I remove that F. However, I want to add the word U below that. So I'm positioning my sticky tape face up again here. And I'm doing the word U, but I decided to use a heart die instead of the O in the word U. So now I'm picking this up and I'm centering it. See how I have the grid on my work surface here? I'm centering the U on that grid. Now I'm centering the hello above it. And now I can have the hello and the U stacked and nice and centered. So I can transfer the U now onto that tape. And now I have this ready to die cut on my card and everything's centered and lined up perfectly. By the way, I do use a lot of tape on this, but I can reuse those pieces many times. Now I'm putting an anti-static powder tool onto my tape just so it's not as sticky. I don't need it to be super sticky. And I'm placing it onto a piece of cardstock and I'll run it through my die cut machine. Any die cut machine would work, but I'm using my Gemini Junior today. Now I can carefully pull away the tape, keeping the dies in place. And now we just need to do the L. So I can carefully remove the L die. There's still an impression on my purple tape, so I know where to put it back if I want to use those dies again to die cut more pieces that say hello you. So now I have a hello you stencil to go with all of my other die cut stencils that I made. Okay, so let's do the first technique, and this is where we add foil via stenciling. Now whenever I want to use stencils these days, I use ThermaWeb Pixie Spray, and I spray it on the back of the stencil. I do it in a box. I actually take the box outside to do it, and you just put a light layer of this on the back of your stencil. Now, my stencils are cardstock pieces that are die cut today, but this works with regular stencils too. 
you just let it dry for a minute and that gives it a little bit of temporary stick so that you don't have to tape your stencil to your paper. And this makes a huge difference, especially when you are applying anything over an intricate stencil. So this is pretty much an intricate stencil here. And because we put the sticky on the back, all of that intricate part stays flat so we can easily apply something over it and get a clean look. So it's hard to see here, but I put my die cut heart stencil, which is just a card cardstock piece that's die cut, onto a piece of white cardstock. I'm applying ThermaWeb Transfer Gel. This is a great inexpensive product that's wonderful for foiling. I'm putting a generous amount over the open areas on my stencil, and now I'm taking a ThermaWeb Stencil Pal and dragging it over to remove the excess and to smooth it out. And I can put the leftover back into the bottle. Now I can carefully remove my DIY stencil, and there you can see the transfer gel on my cardstock. If there are bubbles, just blow it with some air, so I just blow right on it. It pops the bubbles, and then you want to set that aside to dry for about an hour. So let's do a few more. This is the Hello You stencil that I created earlier. I put the center of the O in there too. It all has that pixie spray on the back so it'll hold nicely while we apply the transfer gel on top. Now when I apply the transfer gel, you could use a piece of scrap paper. I have this old palette knife here. And I put a pretty generous amount down as I mentioned because I really wanna fill in all of the openings. Then that stencil pal is the coolest tool. Now I thought it was something that I didn't really need, but it is great for taking one clean swipe across your project and smoothing it out and filling in all the areas evenly. I really find it useful, but you could definitely use a ruler or some sort of straight edge to drag across your project. This is a little bit flexible, so I find that it just works great for this, but you can use anything that you may have on hand with a straight edge. Always be sure to clean off your stencils if you have non-cardstock stencils and all your tools so that nothing dries on them. So I'm going to continue to use these stencils that I created earlier by die cutting cardstock and apply transfer gel over the opening and then use my straight edge to make a smooth sw quite, uh, swipe across it and get nice even results. Now this will be white as it is wet, and then it turns clear as it dries. I thought I'd do one real true stencil example. This is a Simon Says Stamp All My Heart stencil. I did put the pixie spray on the back of it, and then I'm applying the transfer gel on top, and then I can wipe off the excess. Now I will say, I've tried other products besides the transfer gel. That's all that I have found works for the foiling technique and it works really well. And because you're doing it over a stencil, you actually get dimension to your foiling, which is super cool. Okay, so now after I clean everything off and let all these pieces dry, it's time to do foiling and this gives amazing results. Let's start with the background we just created. I've let it dry completely, and I'm going to apply ThermaWeb DecoFoil, which I'm using for all of today's examples. This first one is the Rainbow Shattered DecoFoil, which really has great results, and I'm putting it into a piece of folded parchment with the stenciled side facing up and the, the fancy side of the foil facing up. I then feed that crease first through a laminator, I'll link to the laminator that I use. It takes a few minutes for it to run through, but it applies heat and pressure. And look at the beautiful transfer that you get of that foil onto any of the area where you applied the gel. It's messy on the edges because of how I did my stenciling, but that's okay, I can trim off the excess. And there you see the beautiful foiled results, and it actually is raised a little bit because we used the transfer gel. I trimmed this down and I added it on to a black note card that I made from Hero Arts Pitch Black cardstock, the best black cardstock, that's four and a quarter by four and a quarter. On the center, I used a stacked I Love You die cut and I left this card very simple so that beautiful foiling would shine. Now I like this foil so much that I decided to use it again, this time on the Hello You background that I made on black cardstock. After running it through my laminator, you can see the transfer that I get and it looks really cool against the black. 
If you get any foil where you don't want it, you can just use a craft knife or mono sand eraser to remove it, and I'll show you that a little later. So I trimmed that down and glued it onto some gold shiny cardstock, and then onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I decided to keep this very simple since there's so much sparkle and shine from that foil that we used. So here you can see how you can create a stencil out of any dies and then apply the transfer gel over it, then the foil and get great results. So here's another example. This time I did the transfer gel over a stencil that I created with Simon Says Stamp Blooming Circle Die. And on top of that, I applied the Gina K Sparkling Silver Foil, which is a favorite of mine. Here you can see how I got a little foil where I didn't want it, and all I'm doing is just scraping that away gently, and no one will ever know. So there you can see the dimensional foil that we get with this. Now to finish this card off, I used the new Simon Says Stamp Leafy Frame Stamp Set. Such a gorgeous set. And I thought the Always Here For You would fit perfectly in the center of the wreath that we just created. After white heat embossing the sentiment, I'm using Gina K Connect Glue to add Studio Katya Midnight Blue Crystals to the center of my foiled flowers. I really like how the blue tint of these gems goes with the Hero Arts Adriatic cardstock that I used on this card. So here's a closer look at the final result and how beautiful that shimmery silver foil is. Keep in mind there are many colors of foil and many different finishes, but I think the shimmery silver is one that works on a variety of cards. You can also see here how there's a little bit of dimension to the foiling because we use the transfer gel over a stencil. Okay, my next example shows how to add different colors to your foiling to get the look that you see here. Now in this case, I started with white cardstock where I put the transfer gel over a stencil I created with the Simon Says Stamp Filigree Message Circle Die, which is a new favorite of mine. I put silver deco foil on top and ran it through my laminator. There you can see the foil results that we get. Now what I'm doing is I'm using Copic markers to color the foil. Now I will tell you you can use any kind of permanent marker so Sharpies would work for this too. You want to use the darkest color you can use because it ends up being lighter on the foil. So I can be messy here because I have a trick I'm going to share with you. After I finished coloring all of the foil, I trim the piece down, it doesn't need to be so big, and I'm putting liquid adhesive around the foiling. I then have another piece of white cardstock that's four by five and a quarter, where I use the same Simon Says Stamp Circle Message Filigree die. And I am going to position this over my foiling, foiling lining it up. So I hide all of my messy coloring and I can now once again see the stitch detail that this die has to offer. And I like that that raised foiling kind of fills in the openings on that cardstock we put on top. Okay, I have another fun trick for you. This time it's in adding the sentiment onto the card. This is the Simon Says Stamp CZ Designs Stop Drop Party Stamp Set. Some fun, playful sentiments in there. I chose one and I'm positioning it onto my panel here in my Misty stamping tool. Now I wanted to make sure I stamped this straight and that it looked nice before I did it on my card. So here's my trick. I take some clear packaging, just some thin clear packaging that I had in recycling, and I am inking up my stamp with whatever ink I'm going to use, which happens to be black ink, and I'm stamping it onto the packaging. And there I can see and make sure it's straight and centered and all that before I go ahead and stamp it onto my paper. This is a trick that I use quite often off screen just to save time, but I do think it's great when you have sentiments like this one. Okay, now I've trimmed my panel down and I'm putting on the back of it some craft foam. This is white craft foam. This will just give it nice even raised dimension and it's fast to do. And I'm gluing this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch Simon Says Stamp Fog Cardstock Note Card. When I have bright colors like this, I often like to put that card onto a fog note card. It kind of balances it out. It's a nice soft gray color. So there you can see the raised colorful foiling that we have that fill in all those open die cut spots. I use a lot of intricate filigree type dies today, but you can do these techniques with whatever dies you may have. 
Here's another example of adding your own color to foil. This time I use the Simon Says Stamp Blooming Circle Die. So I have my transfer gel on this white cardstock piece. It's kind of hard to see there. It's face up towards the camera. And on top of this, I'm putting Thermaweb Brutus Monroe Silver Sketch Deco Foil. Putting that in my folded parchment and running it through my laminator, which provides the heat and the pressure. I then added color to all of the foiled areas with my Copic markers as I did in my last example. You can see I made quite a mess on it. That doesn't matter. It doesn't take long to add that color. Then I am adding liquid adhesive around the foiled areas. And I have this panel ready over here that I use the same die. And I stamped hello in the center from the Simon Says Stamp Leafy Frame Stamp Set. So you can see how I have that raised colored foil that fills in the die cut panel we put on top. I added a few white pearls to the center of the flowers. And I trimmed my panel down and put it onto a note card I made from Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock once again. It's four and a quarter by five and a half. I really like how I can add different colors to my foil using permanent pens. Okay, my next example, I wanted to show you that you can even add stamping onto your background when you do this foiling technique. In this case, I once again use the Simon Says Stamp Filigree Message Circle die. And I applied the transfer gel over the stencil that I made with that die, let it dry. Then I put the deco foil in the teal color on top of it, and then I ran it through my laminator. And that's the piece that you see on the left, just like I've done many times in this video. On the right, I have a panel that I cut with the same die. And on top of it, I'm putting a circle mask, just to mask off that center area. This is Simon Says Stamp Sea Glass cardstock. And on top of it, I'm stamping with Simon Says Stamp Sea Glass Ink, the Simon Says Stamp You Matter To Me background stamp. So this will give a nice tone-on-tone -tone look. I use this sea glass color an awful lot. So I'm stamping the ink once again, just to get a double stamp, a darker color, removing the mask, and there we have our front panel with some stamping on it. I like to do the stamping here instead of on top of my foil. So now I'm putting some adhesive on the back of this panel, and then we will line it up with our foiled piece. This will allow the foil to fill in the open areas of our die cutting, and we will be able to see the stitch details and our stamping on the front panel. After adding this to a note card, it's time to add our sentiment to the center. I decided to use Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Strips. There are two different packs that you can get, and they're filled with lots of pre-printed sentiments. You just trim out the one you want, and you can add it to your card. Well, these are printed with a laser jet printer. If you print with a laser jet printer, not anything else, just a laser jet, you can foil that printing. So I'm putting this in between my parchment paper with foil on top, running it through my laminator, and there we have a foiled sentiment. You can print your own sentiments using a laser jet printer if you have one. Or you can just buy these sentiment strips that are printed for you, and you can add foil. You do need a laminator to give you the heat and the pressure to transfer that foil. And I use the same foil that I used for the card that you see above. By the way, here's a little trick to add dimension behind your thin sentiment strips. What I like to do instead of using a thin strip of craft foam is to cut three strips of cardstock from a scrap cardstock that are a little bit more narrow than our sentiment strip. I stack them all on the back of the sentiment strip to give some strong dimension to that thin little strip and then we can add it onto our card. I find liquid adhesive works really well for this and allows you to make sure you have it centered when you glue it down. So here's the final card. I did add a few little pearls around our foiling and I stamped the same Simon Says Stamp You Matter stamp on our matching envelope. Here's another quick example that I did where I used the Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Strip. This time I used teal foil on the sentiment and you can see it has a shine to it. Now this card was made using the Simon Says Stamp Filigree Heart Die along with Thermoweb Rainbow Deco Foil. So this isn't the shattered one, this is just regular rainbow foil. And it was done just like the other examples. It is a smaller card, it's 3.5 by 5.5. Next, I wanted to show a quick example that this technique is great for border dies too. We're gonna do this card here on the right. 
I have my transfer gel on my white cardstock using the Simon Says Stamp Filigree Border Dye. On top of the dry gel, I have put that Rainbow Shatter Deco Foil that I used earlier, put it in the folded parchment, and ran it through my laminator. And there you can see the transfer of that beautiful rainbow, just gorgeous. I could have gotten a similar look using my Copic markers on silver foil, but boy, this makes it easy. I have some foil in areas I don't want it, so I'm just using my craft knife and my sand eraser to scrape that away. But actually, I ended up deciding that I wanted to put another die cut panel on top, as we've been doing, since this border die gives faux stitching details. So you can either leave it without the die cut panel on top, or if you have a detailed die like this one, you can put the die cut panel on top and the foil is raised and fills in the areas. I decided I really wanted to keep this very simple, so I just added that same sentiment from the CZ Design Simon Says Stamp Stop, Drop, and Party stamp set. Now here's a similar design. This time I used Hero Arts Adriatic cardstock instead of white, and I used Thermoweb Opal Deco Foil, which is just beautiful. The opal look is beautiful in real life, and it just doesn't catch in the video. I apologize for that. I did apply the opal uh, deco foil over our transfer gel, and I'm going to go ahead and line it up here so you can see how that raised foiled area fills in that die cut panel like we did on the last example. However, if you do not have a laminator and you want to have a similar look, you could just put adhesive on the back of your die cut panel and tape onto that a piece of that foil. So I'm not actually foiling, I'm just putting the foil behind the die cut opening and that foil will show through. You can see it's beautiful results. It shows nicely. I just happen to like the raised look of using the transfer gel and that it fills in the uh, die cut openings. But you do have that option if you don't have a laminator. And again, check out that other video I did where I show foiling without a laminator for similar techniques to that last one. But here I did use the transfer gelled foiled piece and have it behind our die cut panel and I white heat embossed a simple hello there sentiment. Now that sentiment is from this new Simon Says Stamp stamp set that has beautiful daisy images and I'll be using this in a video very soon. Okay, my next two cards show how you can use your little scraps of foil that you have left over to create some foiled cards. Now in this case, I use the Simon Says Stamp filigree butterfly die. I created that stencil, applied the transfer gel over it, let it dry. Now I have my folded parchment and I have four pieces of scrap foil that I had left over. I keep them all in a bowl together and I'm putting the four pieces over my transfer gel. It's hard to see there, but you can overlap these foil pieces and whatever is touching the gel is the color that will transfer. So I decided to put four different colors down. Those are all Gina K shimmer deco foils, which are incredible. Ran that through my laminator and here is the results. I did do a die cut panel that I put on top. So I got my little stitch details and I added a silver foiled sentiment strip from Simon's stamp to the center. Very simple, but because I used four different colors of shimmer deco foil, it has a lot of interest to it. And by the way, ThermoWeb makes the Gina K and Brutus Monroe deco foils. So they're all from ThermoWeb in great quality. Okay, here's another example where I used different little tiny scraps of foil that I had left over. For this one, I used the die that coordinates with the Simon Says Stamp stamp set. So you can see the happy birthday over there. I had die cut that from cardstock like earlier, and I used it as a stencil to put the, th the uh, transfer gel down. Once it was dry, I have tiny little scraps of foil left over here, and I'm putting a different piece of foil on each letter. You can kind of see the letters there. This took a little bit of time and patience because I did accidentally mess them all up when I folded my parchment. But if you're careful, you can keep them still, run them through your laminator, and the foil will transfer onto all of those letters. And I just really like the look of that. So I did trim that down, added it onto a piece of black cardstock, and then onto a Simon Says Stamp fog note card that I stamped the Simon Says Stamp circle doodle stamp, just for a little bit of interest on the background. I decided to not add anything else to this to allow those beautiful little scraps of foil to shine. 
Okay, my next two examples show another way to do foil die cutting. In this case, my background, the flower, was done how I showed you before. But see that gold circle? For that one, I used a fun product from Thermal Web that is toner sheets, pre-printed toner sheets. Now the ones that I have don't have sticky on the back. They do sell a peel and stick toner sheet, which I wish I had. Because when you die cut it and foil it, all you have to do is peel the back off and add it to your card. Well, I die cut a circle from the toner sheet. That's what you see here, and I put some gold foil on top. I'm running that through my laminator just like before, and that foil transfers onto our die cut. So I just created a simple circle foil die cut, but you could create a die cut from any die you have and do foiling on it. Now here I did create a background using the Simon Says Stamp Filigree Flower Die. I had foiled over my transfer gel with silver foil and I colored it with Copic markers. So that's how I created that background, just like I showed you earlier. But I added my foil circle die cut to the center along with a sentiment from the Daisy Bouquet stamp set. So you can see how the foil is both shiny when you use the transfer gel or the toner sheets. Now my last example shows using those toner sheets once again to create a foil die cut. This shows that you can do this with pretty much any die that you may have, including intricate sentiments like this one. So I use the Simon Says Stamp You're Doing Awesome die and die cut it from the toner sheet. I'm adding a little scrap of that rainbow shatter foil on top. I'll put it in the folded parchment and run it through my heated laminator. When it comes out, I'll have that foil all covering that entire die cut. It's just beautiful. Now I kept this card pretty simple. I stamped the Simon Says Stamp Circle ba Doodle Background Die with Simon Says Stamp Fog Ink. And then I just glued my little die cut on top. Remember, there is a toner sheet with the peel and stick, so all you would have to do is peel it off and stick it on. I just don't happen to have that, so I use liquid glue to add my die cut. I also put a few little colorful gems around it, but I kept it simple so that shimmer and shine of the foil die cut would show. So those are a couple different ways to do foil die cutting. Again, check out that other video for more ideas. I know that this requires specific products to do these techniques, such as the transfer gel and the toner sheets, but I think it's worth it if you want to get more out of your foiling techniques and the dyes that you may have. So just another fun way to use these products. If you're interested in any of them, they are linked below so you can check them out. In the middle are a couple other foil videos for you to watch. I appreciate the time that you spent with me once again, and we'll see you again very soon. And by the way, my next video will show foiling with stamping. See you then.